I know it takes a minute or two for it to like boot up and whatnot. Um, okay, so in the in the course on the right hand side, you'll see a new thing that I put in. It says uh, C4 features. I just finished writing this last night. Let me get back to the thing. All right, so on the right-hand side of the course in the upcoming, you'll see where it says, uh, I don't know why this is keeps jumping around. There you go. So on the right-hand side, there's a link that says C4 features. It takes you to a uh, Schoology assignment that's like a, a OneDrive file. Anyway, you can also find it in the chapter three folder. So in the chapter three folder down at the bottom, it says uh, C4 features. So you work on that today and uh, tomorrow. So in the in the document itself, uh, there's a really, really good illustration of the kind of, it's not a particular place on earth, but a stereotypical place where you have land that meets water at a shoreline. And you can see how the continent extends outward and on this continental shelf where the water is very shallow and then the slope down to the ocean floor, the abyssal plain. There's also another really good diagram showing uh, for two like hypothetical continents left and right here. And there's seafloor spreading happening at the middle with the mid ocean ridge with features like sea mounts, how the continental shelf and continental slope would look and the abyssal plain. Anyway, um, within uh, the Chrome browser, you want to go to Google Earth. So you can either type earth.google.com or if you go google.com slash earth, it takes you to the same place. It doesn't really matter. And uh, in the document, I provided some like helpful hints, but um, I can just show you how the settings work. And it kind of depends on like... Uh, If you've used this before or whatever the default setting is for Google Earth, I don't know, let me know when you get like, get to Google Earth to load. So um, when you're in Google Earth, uh, there's a, a setting that you want to change to be able to get into metric units. So in the document, I describe how there's a menu in the upper left corner. So these menus don't like have words on them and whatnot, but in the upper left hand corner in Google Earth, there's like three lines and that takes you to a menu. And if you click on menu, and then in the menu, there's a, uh, button that says settings. And when you click on settings, that allows you to make some changes and you can scroll in the settings to change the different stuff. But this unit of measurement, you wanna put it like in meters and kilometers so that we're in like uh, metric units. You can also make other setting changes. Uh, this one by default is on the dark theme, which is okay, but it kind of makes everything look kind of dark. If you put it in the light theme, it, it it brightens it up a little bit, kind of makes the ocean floor look a little bit better. Um, you can just see it like literally makes the whole thing brighter, unless you want it in dark mode. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. And then um, anytime you want to go somewhere, you can either just like grab the earth and move it around, 
but you can also search. So up here in the search, if I mention, like in the first problem, I say, you know, go to Australia. If you just go, I mean, you can probably know where Australia is. Oop, that's Austria. I don't want to go to Austria. That's a whole different place. So if you type like Australia, it'll put Australia in the middle of your viewing window. How do you what? Oh, the clouds. Yeah, they're kind of obnoxious. Um, when you zoom in, the clouds will go away. They're, um, let's see, there's a different map view. Uh, maybe it's in map style. Remind me later. Oh, here they are. Um, so there's this button here that has map style on the left hand side. And one of the layers is animated clouds. Is that on on it? See what I mean? It's not on, okay. But you have clouds. Your clouds will go away if you zoom in. They, they should go away. Do they go away if you zoom in? Yeah, all right. So anyway, in the in the lower right-hand corner, you can find the depth, but a thing that you've gotta know is you gotta zoom in far enough. And I can't tell you how far enough far enough is because it depends upon how zoomy you are. Um, but if you zoom in far enough, then in the lower right hand corner it'll show a depth and i don't know you can also click 3d which is kind of nice because you can like rotate around some places and if your earth is ever upside down in the lower right hand corner there's this little compass needle um and if you click it it'll like rotate the earth by 90 degrees each time but or it'll make it so that if the red is up in the lower right hand corner on that little compass needle then it'll like make the earth like so that up is up again, but things shouldn't get too disoriented. Google Earth is a program program that you can download and run. It doesn't work on Chromebooks and Chromebooks only works in the uh, browser, but Google Earth, the program program is actually like a little more powerful, but it's a lot more confusing too. It's actually kind of nice in there. So anyway, in the seafloor feature thing, um, so you can have like two windows open at a time. Um, I ask you some like application things. So to find some different places, like search for Australia, there's a continental shelf that extends from the continent all the way around the continent. So for which of the coasts does the continental sh shelf extend for the smallest distance? The continental shelf, you can either see it visually by color, uh, the lighter color is more shallow, or you can also zoom in and go around and look to see like what the depth is in different places. But around any particular, you know, continent, there are places where the continental shelf doesn't extend very far. Like, so here in the lower right corner, it doesn't extend very far. But up here, the continental shelf is much bigger. And in fact, uh, Papua, uh, Papua New Guinea and Australia are actually the same continent. You can see how shallow it is up here. And uh, it extends continuously. So any, any place that you want to find, you can just search for it in the search bar. In fact, the second one is about the uh, Onifera Sea, which is um, north of Australia. So you could search for that, but it's also visible here. But I also describe the Tasmanian Sea, which is uh, or the Tasman Sea, which is between Australia and New Zealand. So they're not true like seas, like the European seas, but that's how that goes. All right, and then uh, I don't know what else. You can see uh, sea mounts, but I also, in number four, there's, I'll show you this real quick. Um, you can find things by latitude and longitude. And in number four, I said type 41.7 comma negative 
that's actually a long latitude and longitude. And if you copy that, then you should be able to paste it into the browser. That takes you to the place where the Titanic sank. Um, you can see how deep the Titanic sunk. The very end, I made a, I made another link here, but it's actually wrong. I accidentally typed, sometimes I use tinyurl, sometimes I use bit.ly. It says tinyurl.com slash curstory. Because number eight is about the Kerr Atoll, which is actually a US possession. And there's a really cool story about the COVID pandemic. Um, the Kerr uh, Atoll is a US possession. It's technically in the state of Hawaii. It's way west of Hawaii and it's a bird sanctuary. And uh, there are usually always a few people there. They're sinus. They take them out uh, by plane, drop them off and say, you're here for six months, nine months, 12 months, drop them off with all their supplies. And they do bird counts and clean up trash that washes up on the island. So there was actually a team of four scientists that were dropped off last February. And they're like, you got a six month mission. And uh, because they didn't have coronavirus and because they were completely isolated, they instead of doing six months, they got extended to nine months. And it was in uh, December, they had to come back to society. And they knew the coronavirus existed, but they were like, whatevs, none of us have it, so we're good. And when they had to return to society, everybody else had been like socially distancing and wearing masks from March to December, and they just get thrown into the whole thing. In fact, uh, they had intended to do the six months and they extended it to nine months and uh, they could have stayed there like forever. There's also another issue with the International Space Station and that we've had resupply missions and people go back and forth and it is absolutely critical to make sure that like people don't go to the International Space Station carrying communicable diseases because then you get everybody on board the space station sick, maybe even kill them. So the quarantine procedure for uh, astronauts traveling to the International Space Station has been far more stringent like true quarantining. Like you're the crew of two and you're about to go up. You're gonna be stuck like in this building, completely isolated from everybody for three weeks in order that we make sure that like you're good to go. And then with very little contact with other people before the mission goes up. That's bad if you like. Imagine if someone like had the measles and wasn't immune to it, went to the National Space Station and gave everybody measles and killed them, that'd be, that'd be bad for a lot of reasons. So anyway, that link is wrong. I'll write what it should be. It should say... bit.ly slash cur story. Yep. Yeah, that, 
that about dark stripes in the lake color? That's actually the Great Barrier Reef. And it's still sea small bit. Yeah, like the Honey Nemo, they start out with the Yeah, they start out with the top of that and then go south. You see on the southeast corner of Australia there, the continental shelf is very, very narrow. But you know, stuff is much more the light and smaller than that. See what I mean? Like the blue it doesn't extend very far. So that means if you leave it's if you leave shore and go out into the water, it gets really deep for the tracks. But in northern Australia, it's very shallow for a long distance. Do you have what I'm saying? Um, Google Earth won't let you search. Okay, so like, let me go to new share. Do you guys, is your search thing working okay? Like the, yeah, okay. All right, so I mean, on the left hand side, this search, if you click it once, you might have to wait a moment and then it should bring up the menu to search. If it's not working, maybe just try to reload, like just try to reload the uh, browser, you know, so go up here and hit return. Yep. What's that? Yeah, like here on this one, like that's a seamount here, 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 here. Usually it's like all flat and then there's bumps. Yeah.
the water around Florida is really shallow for big waves. So if the water level around Florida were to drop, Florida would get a four times bigger. But if the ocean came up just like 10 feet, Florida would almost disappear. Yeah. Miami, they're actually raising the city up. Like there are whole places where, like you go to the streets and the, the study playground class, the streets and the sidewalks get flooded all the time. They're tearing the streets and sidewalks out. Filling it in, you should keep the sidewalk. Because, uh, like, there are streets in Fort Lauderdale and Miami that were built 50 or 100 years ago and never got flooded. And now they get flooded like every, every two years. So, there's two issues Florida is slowly sinking, the oceans are rising. So, you know, we end up getting. Built like cities and you put in parking lots and like streets and sidewalks, instead of water soaking through the ground, it has to run across the ground. You know, run off toward the ocean. So when places are right by shore, instead of the water that rains on land soaking down into the land, now runs across the land. You get more runoff. Yeah. There's a Then they built this huge like strip mall kind of thing, kind of like our Target. And that's one of those Target is on the mall. And it's just a side of town. Now every time cables are running, all the rain that like falls on a huge parking lot, instead of just soaking in the ground like used to, now it runs right down into the main street of downtown. Wow. And it's completely Yeah, and all the all the homeowners and landowners that used to never get flooded now that the target is built they get flooded all the time Screen. So here's like, that's video from Ellicott City. Like, that's their like historic business district. And now about once every other year that happens. And it's, yeah, and it completely floods out all the first floor businesses. And then uh, it just ruins everything. They got to clean it all out. 
rebuild all those businesses, restock the stores. And then, uh, so that downtown region has existed for like 150 years and that never happened. And then a development uphill from it where they built hardscape. Now the water rains on that hard surface, runs across and it goes right down and through downtown. And it happened in 2016, 2018, and 2020. So you own one of those shops there, every other year, your shop gets ruined. You go, well, it doesn't, it's not necessarily every other year. It just turns out that the, the development was finally completed in 2013. And then by 2016, there was a heavy enough rainstorm that happened. But, um, you know, it's like in the summertime, you get a real heavy rainstorm, like a real good drencher. And, you know, those happen every, you know, every year, every couple of years anyway. But in, but whenever the ground, like when ground is permeable, when it's soil, yeah. it rains into the ground, tree roots help to like, you know, prevent erosion. The water goes into the ground and into small streams. When you get rid of the small streams and pave over everything, make it hard surfaces, hard roofs, hard parking lots, hard roads, the water has nowhere to go except to run across the surface. And if it's in like a valley, it just acts like a funnel. And that historic business district is like down in the little valley and all the water stays on the surface and it happens. <laughs> so the people who are down in the historic business district are really angry. So there is, they've talked about just abandoning it. Eventually insurance companies are like, we're not gonna do it anymore. Like if you're an insurance company and every two years you're completely rebuilding someone's business, there's a point when you're like, that's it. You're, you're done. It's like people who have homes near creeks and rivers here in central Pennsylvania. There's flooding, their house gets destroyed. You might rebuild the house at the same place. Insurance companies only do that so many times. They're like, it's not, not worth insuring you. <laughs> we'll give you some cash, you can walk away, build somewhere else. You know, then you're, then you're not inconvenienced either because who wants to have their place flooded? Like there's, there's never a good reason for that to happen. I mean, unless your place is trashy and you want to rebuild it, make it nice. But. Like understanding water and managing water resources for this planet is one of the most fundamentally critical things that we have to do as a living being. Yeah, so um, you should find, like when you type it in, it should put a dot on here. Yeah, well, yeah, you know how to find, you know, like, like, you know how to see the depth down here? So you should be able to find, like, okay. Um, whenever you first go to it, and it's spinning, it's in 3D mode. If, as soon as it goes there and starts to spin, if you click where it says 3D, it'll change to 2D and it'll stop spinning. And the dot should stay on there. Yeah. Oh, like what kind of boundary? Well, place either, they're either divergent boundaries or they come together. Divergent boundaries where they start apart, or transform boundaries, like where they come from. What's that? They could be higher than the other, but transform boundaries happen when motion force falls side to side. Um, that's a, a deep ocean trench. And deep ocean trenches are common with one type of boundary. divergent, they spread apart. You get that mid-ocean ridge, it's like a, a section where plates come together. 
together and they're covered, one goes underneath the other. That usually forms a trench. So one Turns out that like if you study a lot of geology about the land, you you kind of have to like reverse that.
remember we actually really destroyed them because a lot of times they were just like coral reefs that had like a little bay and not much in there. And to build an airstrip, they would like dynamite and remove like all this coral and then like build it up to build like an airstrip. So the the corals up tended to be like old volcanic events. The island was like shaped like this. And now all that there is is like a like a runway with like a little bit of coral like sticking out. We really like both the US and the Japanese, we were like those little dots of land are critical for to be able to do wartime operations because the ocean is so annoying. Nowadays you can fly as hard as you want, but it's not easy. But in the nineteen forties it's not easy. I put the wrong address. It's not, it's a bit.ly story, not a tiny URL. Like I use both tiny URL and bit.ly and then, but I can't change it now because once I put it in as an assignment of school with you, I can't edit it. Because if I do that, it like makes it go away for you. Well, if I delete it, it deletes everything you do. You know what I'm saying? So,
how we actually see what you're writing is when I go into OneDrive for that assignment, it has a folder and it has a separate Word document for every student. So whenever you're editing your thing, no, that's just the information. How it goes is like uh, when you are doing assignments in OneDrive and Schoology, you're actually making edits in my OneDrive. Like you can say that it's your OneDrive, but it's actually an assignment. There's a separate file that. You might have to rename it or whatever. You don't want to see what that stands for. Yeah, you, you gotta, like, if it's for the whole verse, you gotta go about five or six times. Like Google, like, you have Google Earth as a separate program, which basically you have any computer except for the Chromebook. <laughs> yeah. Well, Google Earth is available. Google Earth Pro is available for Chromebook, but separately, mm -hmm. because this just doesn't have it installed. It doesn't have to be installed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I'm going to like lobby the teacher doesn't want to do that either because it no, it doesn't cost any money. But what happens is this thing is there's a program for every student that I want to get on this thing. This stuff that they do it, it subs for everybody. And they're like, well, we don't want to have like, we don't want students to like not know what it is or be confused and also take up space. Like, there's not a lot of storage space on these computers. So they're like, So the reality is, like, the one that's storing up the physics, we only use it for the one computer. And I was like, full of students, but there were like 1,800 students in high school. So they're like, yeah, you want to load it. And they, they can do it for individual Chromebooks, but then it comes, then you're like personalizing every Chromebook for every student. So I'm going to be like, is there a way to like push the program at all to only use it for students? Or can somebody from IT come here and do it for this class? Or what? So we know how things are going to work for this year. This year they're just like, we're giving them Chromebooks, you just gotta figure something out. It's like, okay. So now there's now that we have experience and computer figure, we can maybe be a little more thoughtful for next year. So then I don't know if like I don't know if the plan is to take me and if you're a senior, of course you gotta get back. But for like up through seniors to be for the summer and then get to sync them with older. Yeah, so here's the thing. I never got a straight answer from the principal about that. But you're right. On the insurance thing, it says, it totally says that, that if you pay through the insurance for the year, then when you graduate, you keep it. Yeah. And I asked, I'm like, so does that mean if a senior, how much was it? Like 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. Like, does that mean that if a senior gives you 20 bucks to buy the insurance for the year, they get to keep their device in this school year? They're like, well, we don't really have an answer for that. I'm like, well, that's what it says. Yeah. So, no. frankly, like, if Basically, you, you get a free computer. 20 bucks. That's, that's why I was. Yeah. Buy, the, buy the insurance. Buy it like, you told you earlier. I mean, that's why I, I, told, I told my first year, I'm like, listen, what do you have to pay for? Not only for 20 bucks, is your, are you covered for the year? <laughs> but it's <laughs> yours. Wait, so, so is it too late to buy the insurance? I think so. But see, I, but see here, here's the other thing. The Chromebooks, like actually the, the Chromebooks senior job, you guys actually have the crappiest one. I don't know if you know that. Because, and I think it kind of makes sense because like those are going to be phased out, right? Elementary students have the sweet ones with the touch screen, the whole yeah. get up, you know? They're fast. I know. But see, it makes sense though because, you know, if, well, if you're going to like, Phase some out and get rid of some, and if seniors walk away with the yeah, old ones, it's, it's, it's not on the old platform. I didn't get one this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know which one I have, so I don't want to be very no. no. Some will say like Elvis or no. this or that, or no. say like Pepper Lincoln. Because the end of the school year, like, well, when it was like when we went out. March, we basically said, okay, what do we got? And then they rounded up all the Chromebooks and then just put them all in one place and check them all out. Yeah. 
of them are the straight ones, you can turn them backwards. Yeah. So it's like a tablet. Those are sweet because you can like write math problems right on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Like doing science, like physics and math is so much easier. But it's going to be at least three years before the freshmen have been straight anymore. Yeah.